Hello, I'm Adrian and welcome to another improv session. And today we're going to be playing some blues and we're going to be soloing over a backing track inspired by a certain Albert King song. And the idea is this, I'm going to play two or three choruses over the backing track, then I'm going to talk about what I just did and discuss the options that you've got playing over these chords. Then I want you to have a go yourself. I'm going to make the backing track available for free on my website. So let's get started. I'm going to have a little bit of a solo and I should say I'm not trying to play in the Albert King style at all I'm just doing my own thing and seeing what happens <laughs> So there we go, that was fun. It's not often I get to cut loose in a blues styly and pull ridiculous guitar faces, but I really quite enjoyed that. Let's kick off by talking about the chord progression then, and there's not that much to say. It's a fairly standard 12 bar blues in the key of A. And incidentally, Crosscut Saw, which is the Albert King track that this is based on, is in the key of A flat, but I've decided just to move everything up to the key of A just because it's a key that I'm sure most of you are more familiar and more comfortable with. So the chord progression itself, just one, four and five chords. We've got four bars on the one chord, which is A7. There's no quick change here, so it's four whole bars on that one chord. Then we've got two bars on the four chord, back to the one chord for two bars, and then it's five, four, and back to one again. It ends with just two bars on the one chord. There's no turnaround here. It doesn't go to the five chord in the last bar like you often do in a blues. And the other thing to note here is the rhythmic feel of the track. It's not a swinging blues like a lot of blues tracks are. It's got a straight eighths feel and it's got kind of a Latin drum groove if you listen to it. I'm not quite sure how you describe that. Is it a rumba blues? I'm sure somebody will tell me, but it's got that kind of Latin-y feel. So if you're a beginner or if you've got limited experience with improvisation, I don't want you to let that stop you having a go playing over this track. And I don't want that to stop you playing a really convincing solo. I think uh, most important things when you're playing over a blues are clear, strong phrases and just playing with a bit of attitude and a bit of conviction. So take a leaf out of Albert King's book. I mean, when you listen to the opening of Crosscut Saw, it's just so strong, but it's really simple at the same time. It's just minor pentatonic, but really nicely phrased. I think his opening phrase goes something like this. Couldn't really get much more simple, just kind of three notes with a little bend, but it's so strong and it's played with such attitude that it's just fantastic. In fact, I think when you hear more advanced players solo over a blues, there's often too much going on, they're overplaying, and I'm sure I'm sometimes guilty of that myself, but when I listen to some modern blues players, it's just some kind of boring chops fest and they're just showing off their technique and their knowledge and it just makes me switch off completely when I hear that kind of playing. So keep it simple kids and I'm just going to play 12 bars keeping it as simple as I can just A minor pentatonic strong phrasing just to kind of show you how much mileage you can get out of box one A minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> Thank you. 
Now, if you're more of an intermediate player, I think you want to be comfortable playing the blues anywhere on the fretboard, and you want to be able to express yourself anywhere you might find yourself on the neck, and that's what I was trying to do when I played just now. And I think if you're playing a blues in A, you want to aim to be as comfortable in any of the other parts of the neck as you are just playing in and around the fifth fret and the fifth position. So obviously you can do your homework and you can learn your scales and arpeggios. You want your major pentatonic, your minor pentatonic, your dominant seventh arpeggios in all the caged positions. But in addition to that, I think you want to be doing some more musical kind of exercises. And a favourite exercise of mine is just to take a very simple phrase in box one a minor pentatonic and then see how many other places you can find it on the fretboard and it's a really good way of opening up some of these possibilities and understanding the fretboard so for example we could just take a really simple phrase like uh, like this one and then just to see where else we can find that phrase so i could come up here put it up uh, an octave um, so you can see there we've probably got a dozen or so possibilities just for that one simple phrase and having said that it's important to realize that some licks and phrases just seem to sit more naturally in certain positions than others so it's important to get to know the character of these different zones of the neck and one exercise that I sometimes give to my private students is just to write a lick or find some kind of blues language in each of the minor pentatonic scale shapes so when you do find yourself using this scale pattern you're actually going to have something to say with the scale rather than just noodling up and down it. I'm sometimes asked what scales do you play over a blues and there's not really an easy answer to that question I don't think. And it's one of the great things about the blues is on one level it's very very simple we've just got these three basic chords but there are so many possibilities and options when it comes to playing over those chords. Just over this A7 for instance I can obviously play the A minor pentatonic, I could play the A major pentatonic, I could play a dominant seventh arpeggio, I could play the mixolydian mode, I could get into some kind of melodic minor based sounds although personally I'm not such a fan of those melodic minor kind of things in a straight ahead blues context it starts to sound like some kind of dodgy fusion music which is never a good thing in my book and one important thing if you want to sound like you're playing the changes in a blues and really describing each chord as it goes past rather than just sticking to one scale throughout is to be aware of chord tones and if you want to know your chord tones you need to know your arpeggios so uh, just a quick example here if you're playing in and around the fifth position as well as knowing your scale options I think it's important to have your dominant seventh arpeggios mapped out so in this position here I've got my a7 arpeggio the, the arpeggio of the one chord and then in the same position the four chord arpeggio And then the five chord arpeggio. And I've got all of those arpeggios mapped out in the same position and of course you're then free to mix that in with your licks and with your pentatonic stuff but this way you really know where those chord tones and where those strong notes lie on the fretboard. So the point in the 12 bar where it goes to the five chord is a really important one and that's a spot where very often I like to play the changes and I like to bring out the sound of that E7 chord, that 5 chord. So a couple of things that I think I did in my solo there is when it hits the E7 you can kind of take it in a major or a minor direction. So I might think E major pentatonic and I think I played a little phrase that was something like this. Just a simple E major pentatonic phrase works really nicely just to go to E major pentatonic there and then back to back to A minor pentatonic for the four and for the one chord and another possibility is to go minor here so I could think E minor pentatonic just over the five chord and 
Uh, again, I think I played something like this. So anything like that, I'm just thinking about E minor pentatonic around the seventh position and So minor and then back to A minor for the rest of the 12 bars. So have a think about that five chord, explore some possibilities, whether it's minor pentatonic, major pentatonic, arpeggios. You can maybe write some licks or come up with some phrases and then when that five chord does pop up, then you can really describe it and bring out its sound. You might like to think about double stops and these are a really good way of adding a bit of light and shade and a bit of dynamic to your solo. You don't just want to be playing single note lines all the time. Sometimes it's good just to thicken up the sound with some double stops. Now I can't remember exactly what I played in my solo but I know I played some sixths and I think some thirds as well. So with sixths I generally like to think of them as coming out of familiar chord shapes. So an A7 chord for instance take this this shape here it's a C form A7 and hiding within that shape we've got this little double stop sixth shape it's a C sharp and an A and then you can just move that up and down around the chord shape and you can do that with each of the chords in the blues so for D7 I've got my chord shape six around there and then the same thing for the E7 chord um, that kind of thing likewise for thirds I like to see these shapes in and around familiar chords so if I've got just an A bar chord here hiding within that shape I've got this C sharp and E and I can just move that shape around and then the same thing for the other chords in the blues and then for the E For those of you who are interested, let me briefly take you through the gear that I'm using today. I've gone for my Les Paul and I primarily consider myself to be a Fender player. I think that's what I naturally gravitate towards, but I have to say I'm really enjoying playing the Les Paul at the moment. And this particular Les Paul is a 59 reissue, an R9 from I think 2011, 2012. It actually took me quite a bit of time to find the Les Paul that was right for me and I finally got hold of this one and it's just about perfect I think. My amp today is the Vox AC30 and I'm using a couple of pedals including my newest pedal acquisition which is this. It's an Analog Man Beano Boost which is a fabulous pedal. I've been after one of these for a while. I finally bit the bullet and ordered one and it arrived a couple of weeks ago and it's it's basically a version of the Dallas Rangemaster treble booster uh, as used by um, allegedly by Eric Clapton on the John Mayall Blues Breakers album hence the name Beano Boost for, for the pedal and uh, it sounds really really great for those kind of old school blues tones also good for kind of rock stuff as well I think Tony Iommi of Black Sabbath used a range master quite extensively. Now the thing with treble boosters is they like to go into an amp which is already breaking up a bit. If you run a treble booster into a clean amp it just doesn't sound that great. It sounds quite harsh but as soon as you go into a dirty amp it sounds amazing. Or failing that you can just run it in front of another overdrive pedal and that's what I've chosen to do today. My Vox AC30 is actually a very clean amp unless you crank it up to stupid volume which I'm not really able to do in here. So I'm actually running the Beano Boost into my J-Rocket Archer overdrive pedal and you get that kind of magic sound. So that's it for this video. I really want you to have a go playing along so remember the backing track is available for free on my website so check that out. And if anybody fancies sharing a video of themselves playing along to this track, then please do so. Probably the easiest way to do that is via Instagram. And I'm not much of a social media kind of a guy, but I do have an Instagram account. So if you want to give me a follow and then tag me in a video of you playing along to this track, I'd love to hear what you come up with. Thanks very much for watching. I shall see you next week. Bye bye.